what's going on everyone welcome back for a video that i cannot say i ever thought i would do never thought i would be here this is uh this is something so anyway this is going to be the waco video it is monday the day we're filming this currently i know it did say they're closed mondays but the gate was open there's been other cars here so this is uh i'm not really prepared to do this video because i thought we were only going to be able to see it from the outside but either way i'm going to do my best give you the tour of where the the waco siege happened siege happened where david koresh and the branch davidians lived where they died and uh we'll see how it goes so let's go so to start this video off, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what happened literally right here back in the year 1993. So even still today, this is this is the Brant Davidian compound. We're about 20 minutes outside of Waco, Texas. And on February 28th, 1993, Branch Davidians with their leader, David Koresh, started a 51-day siege with the ATF, FBI, and sadly, that came to an end on April 19th, 1993, when the David and the Branch Davidians uh, died from wounds with bullets, a lot of them burned to death literally right here which is just, it's like my wife Nicole and I got here and it's honestly kind of scary. It's, yeah, sad, but it's, it's really scary to be here. So the white building, which is, this is called the new church. Funny enough, you see where those doors are straight ahead. They built this and the doors are in the exact spot where the old building was and Obviously, I'm going to put in videos and photos of what happened here in this video, but right where those doors are, that's where the old compound was. Now, this property is really not as big as I thought it was going to be, but there's actually current Branch Davidians that live on the property right there, and they're nice enough to let, you know, tourists, people interested like myself, come in and take a look. But right out there in the road that's straight ahead, that would have been filled the entire street with news crews, the FBI, the ATF, man. And right across the street, there's a house there now, but we'll have to go take a look in a little bit. Um, there was a house there that undercover FBI agents said they were moving into, they were renting to keep an eye on the Branch Davidians. But back in the day, this whole entire road was filled with news crews. So on April 19th, 1993, the house burned. 82 people died. 18 children, 10 years or younger, died. Uh, pretty much at the end, if you don't know the story, you're going to have to uh, do some research for yourself. But at the end of it, they, they brought the, the FBI got sick and tired of waiting around. They brought the tanks in tanks were said to have been filled with tear gas and no one knew who shot first that's the craziest thing the branch davidians the survivors will say the fbi shot first the fbi and the government said the branch davidians shot first but either way authorities gave david koresh every chance he could to come out and surrender but he was always saying he'll come out when he had uh he would surrender once he completed the seven seals, once he finished transcribing the, the book of Revelations, which is a story in itself. So right exactly where we are, this is where the compound was. Man, I can't believe we're seeing. there's a reason why that's left. I don't know. 
I don't know the reason, but there's a reason why they left this. Maybe that's, maybe underneath here is the original. No, like the original stone from the original building. Maybe that's why they left that there. There has to be a reason why this is left open, but that's the original. I'm, that's what I'm just assuming. Oh gosh, well, good thing you like to read. That's pretty, well, there's water under there. The vault area where mothers and children were gassed to death. That is beyond um, sick and sad. But yeah, there's water down there, so. Let's go take a look towards the pool. Now, I'm pretty sure I've seen in older photos, they did have a swimming pool back in the 90s when, the, when they were here with David Perez. This, this probably was the spot that, that uh, the pool used to be. Now, I don't know exactly where. There's fish. There's huge goldfish in there, too. Oh, you could see him somewhat. Hmm. There's a bus somewhere. Determined to find it. So, I don't know. It was about two years ago. The Netflix documentary, Waco, came out. I think it was like 2019. I remember watching that. Now, Waco happened in 93. I was born in 92, so I was only one. Had no idea what was going on. But remember, I was, I was getting older. My mom would talk about this. And, you know, if you were alive, then everybody in the world knew. I remember my mother-in-law saying, you know, when that was happening, the 51-day siege, that's, that was on the news. That's all you saw every day on the news. What was that whole thing was going on. All right here now according well if you watch the the Waco thing on Netflix I have to go home and see if it's still on there it gives you a really really good understanding it kind of it allows you to see both sides not just the FBI side but also the side of the Branch Davidians who were here and you know kind of you could see their story but at the end of that when all that was going on, there's a part at the end where they go, they had a bus. There was a bus that was kind of like an underground tunnel from here. It would go underground and then there was a bus kind of like halfway in the ground. And when people were getting shot by the ATF, the FBI, before like the siege ended, they would die in the house and the Branch Davidians would bring their bodies out because they started to smell. They would bring their bodies out to in the bus, which is somewhere in the crown. But at the end of the movie, um, they're kind of, the house is on fire and they're trying to get out. So they're going under the bus. And then a lot of them, sadly enough, died in the bus, in the ground. And I can't, I don't know if I can find it. I feel like it was right here. So there's the new church. I feel like it was right here. I don't know if they took it out or not. I have my wife Nicole back there looking for the bus on that side, but man, 82 people lost their lives right here. I'm just like, I'm just shocked that I'm actually here seeing this. It's a, it's a surreal feeling. Well, Nicole is signaling me over to her, so I'm pretty sure she found the bus. But this is the back. This is where the whole compound was. Insane. Well, Nicole found the bus. Um, this is, like I said, this is where the compound would have been. Now there's a tunnel that goes underground that they would have came out of. And like when they were here, they would have used this as a storm shelter because obviously we're in Texas get a lot of tornadoes throughout the years, but uh, they use this as a storm shelter. And then at the end, this is where a lot of them pretty much died right here in the underground bus.
and it's still the same bus. That is, that is crazy. I'm like at a loss for words right now. Straight ahead, there's a little sign that says water well and tower. And uh, it says keep out, but this this right here had to be part of a, a tunnel that came out from underneath the house. But I just, I can't believe they have the original bus. And like I said, if you watch uh, the movie, well, the, the series Waco on Netflix, if it's still on there, if you watch that, know exactly what what I'm talking about and why I'm just shocked by this this bus and it's still in the exact same spot that's nuts so over this way by the general bus area they have more uh, more buildings well bottom has of buildings but if you see footage I mean there's millions of videos and everything from inside the house, outside the house, photos, aerial shots. They had a bunch of different buildings here, so this had to be one of the older ones. But, uh, man. So one of the current residents that live here, uh, his daughter just came over and told us that he's opening the church for us. I, I've seen in other videos they have little memorials and information stuff in there, so it's kind enough to open the church for us, and we're going to go inside and take a look. We have a visitor. <laughs> Our cat Nugget is pretty much close to the same color. Hi. He's a little bit more orange, but. Leave it to me to make friends with a cat. Yep. Of course. So we're gonna go in the church. And right here, like I said earlier, this is this is the exact same spot doors are with and uh, man I can't imagine people coming out you know right here down these steps and meeting the FBI agents you know halfway to talk and negotiate I guess we're going they have little brochures Hi, good afternoon. Same to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, so Pablo and uh, Barry Seals are shown on the videotape throwing bales of cocaine and loading up this uh, military cargo jet, right? But they don't know, at least, I mean, it was a hidden camera somewhere. Wow. Okay. So they're there just talking is. and they're loading up the plane. Well, apparently Barry was told that that video was never going to be shown publicly, but they actually eventually did play it. On like CBS, NBC, ABC. This is where we as are. soon as they did that, Barry Seals didn't live that much longer because he was considered he, he out of the top there basically, and so they they he got gunned down. There right next to it's all the you know, we, the victims right years. here. So, but basically the whole operation was they were, and then eventually some of it came to light too in what was called the Iran Contra theory, which congressional hearings. But basically. Uh, what this book talks about then is that Ollie North comes to a bunker in Arkansas and tells Bill Clinton, look, you guys are supposed to keep this quiet. And at least around Little Rock, there's too many people to know about it. So we're going to have to move operations. But if you shut up at this point, you'll be the next president. So basically, it was right on a temporary basis. And we think the And, and you could, in the show Waco, too, you could see, because David Koresh was a musician. He played guitar and he sang. And you could see him. This is where the original church would have been, playing on the stage, the old building. So this is the original. Oh, this is where we are now, right here. This is where we are now. But if you want also... There's a white. Just listen to the, the gentleman talking there, and he was talking about the pastor of the church, and it was everything. 
and it's interesting because uh, one of my one of my fellow YouTube travel vloggers, Scott on tape, go check him out. Scott was here, I don't know, a little over a year ago, and he actually did an interview with someone who lives here, and that's who he was talking about. That's the pastor. He uh, he's originally from Canada, came down here in the 70s, 73. Then he didn't like the whole David Koresh thing, so he left, and then the whole, you know what happened, and then he came back, but he still lives here to this day, and he's the, he's the pastor for the church. Crazy. Here's some memorials that they have by the church. That has to do with the Oklahoma City. Oh, the Oklahoma City bomber? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is, yeah. And then this one's the BATF officers. Oh. Yeah, 1995, that was the year my brother was born. We'll have to go there someday. We're not too far from Oklahoma City. Go track that down. Oh, in memory of the BATF officers who lost their lives on February 28th, 1993. Wow. straight ahead I didn't realize they have horses and there's a that horse is literally in the water it's walking in the water they have a couple more horses and cows I still can't get my head wrapped around how just insane it is to just even be walking here man those horses are coming up one's gonna come up and see us right down there but man this is so many people lost their lives literally right here. It's just, man, it's crazy, crazy part of history. So right here, this is where the current residents live. We've met a few of them already, but we're going to drive up to the memorial, the Stone Memorial straight ahead and check that out right now. So straight ahead is where we were, the new church. There's current residents' homes. They have a little audio visual center. I guess if you're really interested in doing that. But what we're here to see now is the memorial. For all of those who've lost their lives on this land, the seven shepherds of the Advent movement. <laughs> this is interesting. Now I know, yeah, they have all the, all the names of all the people who passed away here. And what's nuts is if you look, look at, like down below, Serenity C. Jones, age four, Little One Jones, age one and a half, age 20, Gregory Summers. Age six, Mount Carmel Center. February 28, 1993, a church and its members known as Branch Davidians came under attack by ATF and FBI agents. For 51 days, the Davidians and their leader, David Koresh, stood proudly. On April 19, 1993, the Davidians and their church were burned to the ground. 82 people perished during the siege. 18 were children 10 years old or younger. I said that earlier. And this is all the names. Wow. Well, this memorial donated by the Northeast Texas Regional Militia. That is something. It's really sad too. Obviously you see people, I mean, age 35, age 40, 27 you know they knew what they were doing they were older they decided to stay i think david koresh said like if you want to go you know there's a door go ahead they decided to stay because that's what they believed in but like all the kids like age two age three babies who age one age 15 13 12 
they didn't really, they didn't have a choice. They were so little. So they, by the cost of their parents, all died right here. Which, that's really sad, you know? Parents made the wrong decision. I don't know. Something. So everyone knows uh, David Koresh by by that name, the, the leader of the Branch Davidians, but right here, Nicole pointed out, good spot. His, his real name was Vernon Wayne Howe, and he's actually up here. August 17th, 1959, April 19th, 1993, founder of the Davidian Branch, Davidian Seventh-day Adventist movement. And what's interesting, too, is David Koresh is actually buried in Tyler, Texas, which from Dallas is about two hours east. I don't know exactly where it is from here, but east of here. And on his tombstone, it says David Koresh, where here it says his real name, Vernon Wayne Howe. A little interesting, huh? So we made it to right outside the actual property. Here's the front entrance. Very thankful that this gate was open today because it says Monday they're closed. But right where we're standing, this is the view that the FBI agents would have had for pretty much 51 days, huh? This entire road would have been filled with the... The news crews, the FBI, the ATF, police officers, and they would have been staring at this house for 51 days. Man, I can't imagine. I see, I don't think, I don't, I think this whole gate is new. Well, the whole fence is new. The gate over here, that's definitely newer. But can you imagine like when they brought the tanks in? I mean, there was helicopters flying up all around. They brought the tanks up and started like going bulldozing into the house. Man. It's just really hard to take in. And there's a newer house here right now. This man, they do not want to be bothered because it says private property everywhere. But as I mentioned earlier, and you can see this in the Waco movie too, on Netflix. There would have been a house right about over here that was here and undercover FBI agents came and they acted as if they were renting the house. Secretly, like I said, undercover police. They were just keeping an eye on the Branch Davidians. So one thing I didn't talk about, which I guess I should have since this video is, is all about this and why it happened. And from my understanding, there's really two things that kind of put them on the FBI's radar. One, there was reports that a guy, middle-aged man, being David Koresh, was doing sexual stuff with underage girls which the later we all found out he was. He was making babies with, you know, 14, 15, 16 year olds. And also the second main reason was because someone, it leaked out that they had so many guns, like over 200 guns, rounds and rounds and rounds of ammo at the compound here. And both of those things got on the, the radar. And then, like I said, the FBI first came, they stayed in the house. That was right over here. The house is no longer here. It was bulldozed to the ground to keep an eye on him. And actually, they somewhat got David Kresh's trust because he brought them over into the house. Like I said, if you want to really dive into this, there's a six-part series on Netflix called Waco. I hope it's still on there. You can really watch that again. But it explains all of it. Got them over. And then once they found out what was going on, it all went back to the FBI and then the whole siege started. This whole road would have been filled with everything and everything was focused on right there. 
it's hard to kind of tell with the video, but like in person, the the movie, the docu series that they made on Netflix, it made it seem like the road here was so much further away from the building. It's really not. It's really, I mean, that's, you know, the buildings were a lot bigger, but it's really not too far away from the main road itself. All right, everyone, signing off here from the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas. This definitely for me was one of the most interesting travel vlogs I've ever done. I did not expect to see this today, which made it even more of a huge surprise. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed, hope you found it interesting. If you did, hit the like button down below and we'll see y'all next time on the Travel Channel. Take care.